Choice Customer Relations Department. Your call may be monitored or recorded for quality purposes. For questions about the Choice Privileges Program or your account, press 1 for member services. To make, change, or cancel a reservation, press 2 for reservations. To speak with someone regarding your experience at a Choice Hotel, press 3 or stay on the line to be connected to a Customer Relations Specialist. Welcome to Choice Hotels. My name is Marcus with Guest Experience Team. I have that with your name, please. Uh, sure. It's William Montgomery. All right. Hi, and uh, how may I help you today? Uh, well, yes. I um I don't know which number to start calling. I just found this number online, uh, but I'm trying to get a hold of corporate. I have a uh, pretty serious complaint. Um, I was just uh, kicked out of a hotel here in Fort Collins out on the uh, highway I-25 and uh, Mulberry. And uh, I tried to drill down the reasons um, behind it. I asked for any sort of like policy violations or things like that. And I was flat out told that, uh, that they reserve the right to refuse service to anybody for any reason. And uh, so I tried to explain to them that there's like a, a common law privilege or right that uh, people have to equal access to goods and products like you know if you're open to the public and so i asked him if he, if, right. if they were open to the public and he said no he gave a very uh obfuscated answer um after i had already asked a different uh lady that works there that if they were and she obviously said yes and so uh it's kind of like you know if like you go to a walmart and you're just simply turned down and and they just say we don't have to serve you and um you know, you could be black or there could be some discriminatory reasons behind it. Um, but he basically said there was no reason at all whatsoever uh, that he was going to provide as to why I was no longer able to purchase his services there. And he also put me on a ban list. So I'm never able to go back there ever. And I don't know, uh, know why I what I did. And but like I said, what concerns me the most is that I asked him if they were open to the public and he would not answer with the word yes. Uh, so this is about as large of a discrimination uh, lawsuit that I can think about. We we very much don't like going down that path. We would just very much like our rights restored and uh, appropriate uh, remedies and, um, uh, I don't know, justice be served in the opposite direction, a, a reprimanding, uh, a correction, uh, s something to let this gentleman know that he was in the wrong. Uh, so I don't know which which path or direction to start with, but uh, we did catch the entire event on audio. Uh, we can provide that to you if necessary. Uh, we were pretty shocked. Um, that's why we started we recording. Things were going great, honestly. So, but yeah, the fact that he said that he was not open to the public, I think, is the largest red flag I've ever seen in um, in 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 public business history. Well, I'm really sorry if uh, you actually have to get the experience or get into this uh, situation. Um, now, now what I'm going to do here is, um, I can actually let you speak to one of our managers about this, okay? And, um, but yeah, you actually reached the, uh, the corporate office, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna make sure okay this will be taken care of or something needs to be done in regards to this matter. So I'm going to connect you directly to one of our managers. Okay. Thank you very much. I I really appreciate that. All right, you're welcome. Let's go ahead and transfer you over. Stay on the line, please. Uh, sure, it's William Montgomery. And William, how can I help you today? Uh, yes, I was just transferred to you from the uh, main line. I found your number online here. Um, 
I am just trying to start some sort of due process to possibly reverse this situation as quickly and as professionally as possible. Um, my brother and I were just ejected or kicked out of uh, one of your hotels here in Fort Collins. It was out on uh, Mulberry at I-25. Um, we asked in very specific terms if we were in uh, violation of any sort of policies. Uh, to which the manager had said none. And so we we quickly tried to explain to him that there's kind of like a common law. Uh, it's a two-sided thing. There's a common law right that you can refuse service to people for specific reasons, uh, but they have to be protected. Or I tried to explain the other side, which is that there's a common law privilege that people have to have equal access to goods and services out there. And so if, we asked him if there was any reason at all as to why we were being kicked out, and he said none. And then he also informed us that we were banned uh, indefinitely and that we were put on some sort of ban list. And so uh, we're really, really concerned um, because we um, we were using that as sort of a lifeline, um, and um, we have some other issues with our lives with regards to finding housing. And so the hotels are kind of our last resort right now. Um, but we basically... Uh, we're pretty shocked uh, right away what he was uh, talking about. And so uh, we actually ended up recording the whole event. And so we have, we have him on audio uh, telling us, um, well, at first, in the very first encounter when he came up to the room to tell us to leave, he did say something about damage from our previous room. And other staff members complaining about us. And uh, some other staff members complaining about us. Uh, but when we went down to ask for uh, a, a report or a list of any violations that we were made uh, making, um, he he basically changed his story up completely and said, uh, "No, we have the right to refuse service to anybody for any reason." And then the, no reason. and and he said that there was actually no reason at all, and that uh, ultimately we asked kind of the final question of questions, and we were like okay, so are you open to the public? And he actually could not provide a yes answer to that. He said something about, uh, again, refusing, um, uh, re reserving the right to refuse service and so forth. And so, you know, I was under the impression that the, that hotel is open to the public. And uh, like I said, that there's only specific reasons as to why you can remove somebody, uh, all of which have to be non protected reasons, meaning like you can't just eject somebody because they're black or something like that. And so uh, I, I don't want to say the words discrimination, uh, but we feel as though something may, may have gone terribly wrong there. And we're extremely concerned. And uh, we uh, don't want to have to go like the litigation route to get some of our rights back. But I really don't like the idea that we are banned forever for things that we don't even know what we did wrong or did nothing at all at all wrong so well, there... i definitely do apologize about that and you said where was this at what was the city and state um this is in uh, fort collins colorado uh it's up near mulberry and i-25 <clears throat> and you said this was the quality in uh, yeah, it's like a half quality in half, uh, um, comfort in, I think. Is it also South Mason Street? Um, or oh, sorry, Choice Hotel. Um, it's off of, um, John Deere Avenue. It's just, uh, northwest of the intersection of Mulberry and I-25. Okay, what I'm asking is, what's the address, uh, what's the street address at the hotel? Oh. Is it also South Mason? Um, I don't think that, uh, I think Mason is way over there in the city. Uh, let me look up the actual address for you real quick. Do you have a confirmation uh, number? Um, I have uh, the receipt that he had um, Okay, what's us. the yeah. account number on that receipt? There it is. Yeah, that's going to be a lot more than the um, yeah, we're also pretty concerned, too, that if I may say real quick, 
that uh, my dad had pre-authorized on Sunday night three days in advance um, uh, for payments to be pushed through. Uh, he's been doing that consistently for over a month uh, that we've been there. And um, we asked the manager, him, um, if uh, how the pre-authorizations went. And he said that there was only a one-day pre-authorization. And so he actually didn't bill us for the room this morning, even though he had the authorization to do so. And then tried to kind of use that as part of an excuse as to uh, why we needed to be out, is you know, because we didn't pay. Well, uh, and so obviously my dad had pre-authorized us to be able to pay, you know, for that. and be, be charged there. It was, uh, we've, been, we've been doing this three-day thing ahead of time for a little over a month. Uh, but anyways, um, the uh, quality in, in suites here at uh, 3836 East Mulberry Street. Um, do you need the uh, account number for it? Okay. Yes, if you can give me that, please. Uh, it's uh, five five nine nine one three eight six six. But yeah, like I said, uh, we asked if he was open to the public, just those words, and he would not be able to answer with the word yes. I mean, I, th I, I figure that's a pretty obvious. And right, right. can I get you to verify uh, the address and telephone number that's on his reservation? Uh, sure. It's going to be uh, under my dad's name, uh, Kent Montgomery. Um, his address is 4424 Piccadilly Court, uh, Fort Collins, Car 80526. Thank you for that. Yeah, I should note, um, when my dad called in, he was given several uh, different reasons. Uh, something about us and uh, some issues with uh, food um, with some managers, which there, there were definitely no issues there that we had and that we were aware of. Uh, he also mentioned something about damages in the room, uh, which we were pretty meticulous when we went through uh, before he change rooms uh so there definitely wasn't any damage there um and so ha having both sides of this story you know we 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 record our conversation with our dad and so um you know for him to tell us that there's absolutely nothing no reason at all and then for him to turn around and, and basically throw out all these reasons well uh, we, we were concerned about the integrity and um honesty of this gentleman i guess you could say Again, I apologize about that. I can contact the hotel um, to see exactly why we lacked to leave. The only thing in the notes that I'm showing is that they just wasn't willing to extend the guests. Um, so, yeah, I would have to get in contact with the hotel to see exactly what's going on here. Yeah. Can I play show to recall? Sure. Uh, yeah, if I may say real quick, okay. um, it would be very interesting okay. to see the answer if he gives you a whole bunch of excuses or reasons like how my dad had received them or if he goes down the path of saying no reason at all. Either way, I don't know how to interpret that, but, um, uh, you know, it, it's all very interesting either way. I'm just concerned. Uh, mo I guess I'm more concerned if he says no reason at all, because if there's no reason at all, uh, you know, why were we kicked out? And also, ultimately, what I'm really concerned about is uh, why are we banned indefinitely? Uh, we, we actually very much right. like that place. We would like to go back someday. So... Thanks okay. for looking at that. All right. Okay. All right. Can you help, please? Yeah, sure. No worries. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. We understand traveling doesn't just mean visiting places. You're going to connect with people. And no matter where that journey takes you, a choice hotel will be nearby. With more than 6,300 hotels and 11 different brands to choose from, we make it easy for you to find the right hotel at the right price close to the people you're traveling to see. We know no one likes to wait. We'll be with you shortly. We want you to seize the day and enjoy the journey. And we think a hotel from one of our brands will help you do just that. 
Enjoy the little extras when you stay at an Ascent Hotel collection or Cambria Hotels and Suites. Or find the perfect place to rest and refresh at Comfort Inn, Comfort Suites, and Sleep In Hotel. You'll get more value when you choose a quality Fort Clarion Hotel. And eight day suites and suburban extended stay hotels are the perfect options when you need to stay a while. And when you're just looking for a simple place to stay, a Lodge and Roadway Inn hotels are never far from your stop along the road. We're sorry to keep you waiting. We're working hard to get to your call. Why not make the journey even more rewarding? Visit choicehotels.com to join our more than 25 billion choice privileges members and enjoy rewards from the everyday to the exceptional, starting right when you join. Remember, wherever your journey takes you, you always have a choice. We understand traveling doesn't just mean visiting places. You're going to connect with people, and no matter where that journey takes you, a choice hotel will be nearby. With more than 6,300 hotels and 11 different brands to choose from, we make it easy for you to find the right hotel at the right price, close to the people you're traveling to see. We know no one likes to wait. We'll be with you shortly.
We know no one likes to wait. We'll be with you shortly. We want you to seize the day and enjoy the journey. And we think a hotel from one of our brands will help you do just that. Enjoy the little extras when you stay at an Ascent Hotel Collection or Cambria Hotels and Suites. Or find the perfect place to rest and refresh at Comfort Inn, Comfort Suites, and Sleep Inn Hotel. You'll get more value when you choose a quality or clarion hotel. And Mainstay Suites and Suburban Extended Stay Hotels are the perfect options when you need to stay a while. And when you're just looking for a simple place to stay, Econo Lodge and Roadway Inn Hotels are never far from your stop along the road. We're sorry to keep you waiting. We're working hard to get to your call. Why not make the journey even more rewarding? Visit choicehotels.com to join our more than 25 million Choice Privileges members and enjoy rewards from the everyday to the exceptional, starting right when you join. Remember, wherever your journey takes you, you always have a choice. We understand traveling doesn't just mean visiting places. You're going to connect with people. And no matter where that journey takes you, a choice hotel will be nearby. With more than 6,300 hotels and 11 different brands to choose from, we make it easy for you to find the right hotel at the right price close to the people you're traveling to see. We know no one likes to wait. We'll be with you shortly. want you to seize the day and enjoy the journey. And we think a hotel from one of our brands will help you do just that. Enjoy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Still here. Thanks, thanks for holding. Okay. So I did speak with Barr, the uh, general manager, and he stated that the reason why he asked uh, for you and your brother to leave was because of the room conditions. Um, he said the last time he checked out, um, the carpet was damaged. And also that, um, I guess the way I have you was speaking to the front desk, he stated that you were very aggressive. So that is one of the reasons why they asked you to leave. And he stated that, um, I guess it was an error when they checked you back in because he had been placed you on the do not rent list. So you wasn't supposed to check back in. And that was another reason why he asked for you to leave the property. Okay. So we're, um, we're actually very concerned that he's given you these reasons. Um, this is why we asked him for uh, this information. Uh, we believe that he is not being entirely truthful, and as a result, he is trying to, I don't know how to say the words better, but um, sort of uh, tiptoe out of a civil discrimination lawsuit. Uh, did he specify specifically which type of damages uh, there were to the carpet? Because uh, we had a great uh, lengthy conversation with our dad already about that. We knew that that was brought up. And um, uh -huh. uh, let, let me ask. I guess it was something in the carpet. He said that he couldn't get whatever that was in the carpet up. So um, he, he stated that the carpet was damaged. So I don't know if something spilled on the carpet or if something happened. But he stated that he couldn't, I guess, get something, whatever that was, got on the carpet up. Okay. So he, said he had to clean the carpet several times, and I guess whatever didn't, wasn't trying to come up. Okay, so that is exactly what we're extremely concerned about. Um, and then the uh -huh. other issue we'll explain in a second. Um, uh -huh. this, is, uh, this is really concerning because when we were in there ourselves, the only issues that we had with that room for the entire duration of it was a toilet uh, um, flusher handle that fell off. And so we simply had to take off the top of the um, toilet to uh, manually pull the chain up ourselves. Uh, we, we didn't actually have to stick our hand into the water either. It was just simply to finish uh, the, you know, to replicate the procedure of the handle. And so uh, that's all we did through the entire time there. And so my brother specifically had noticed this too, and I, he's not here right now, but he can um, explain this. Uh, uh, but I, I, I was present when he explained this to me. 
Um, we were in there the entire time for about uh, 20 some odd days, 21 to 30, about a month. And uh, we never had any issues whatsoever with the carpet. And uh, uh, the only issues that we noticed were after we left, um, we went to a neighboring hotel for a couple of days uh, to, you know, mitigate some sort of 28 day rule, you know, to not be a tenant or something like that. And then uh, as far as I recall, David saying he came back and I noticed this too, um, that some sort of water main had, or something in the far opposite end of the room near the um, chair uh, and the window um, what had, had broken and had flooded that area and it was leaking out into the hallway. And we noticed this okay. only because we stepped what? into Can this. Can you repeat that again, please? Sure. What? Sorry. That? Can you repeat that again? You said water was coming from where? Sure. Yeah. So we um, we only noticed this from the outside, and uh, and uh, after uh, the door was left open to air the area out, that we peek in to see where the damage uh, was alleged to have occurred. Uh, but it was in the far corner of the room, um, so opposite of the bathroom. Uh, this was near the door, uh, near the, uh, what we're guessing is um, near the window and the, where the chairs, basically, I think the heater area-ish. Um, we, we only are imagining that that's where the issue had lied. The only thing we noticed was that uh, a couple of days, about four days after we had gotten back into that hotel, in a different room, in this on the second floor, um, did we uh, walk over this puddle that was seeping into the carpet uh, in the hallway, uh, like on our way over to the um, uh, the restaurant area in the mornings, uh, for instance, we would walk uh, along this same hallway, and that's when uh -huh. we noticed this water main thing had broken, and uh, it was quite wet, uh, um, and it was. Uh, but we didn't. We never noticed that on the inside of the room because we were far out by then. We were. It was about five days since we were in that room itself, and so that water damage had not occurred for a full five days until after we left that room. We had no issues in that room whatsoever. Uh, my brother and I are extremely meticulous. We're pretty OCD, and uh, we would have seen something like that. We would have reported that immediately, and so we're extremely concerned that. Um, just like we had this entire conversation with our dad over because uh, he sort of um, took the gentleman in good faith as well. And uh, we feel as though we we're being framed for that uh, sort of damage. Nobody had mentioned it to us before. Uh, when we left the room, nobody had uh, done a walkthrough and, and told us. Uh, and it wasn't until today that we uh, have been informed that it was us or alleged to be us. So we would very, very much like to uh, refute that with 100% certainty that water damage had absolutely nothing to do with us. Uh, we were, um, initially we thought that they were airing the room out, maybe because it stunk a little bit because we had been in there um, for a couple of weeks without any maids or something like that. Um, but once we realized that it was an actual water damage, um, we we were under the impression actually that we, um, we thought it might have been room 108 too, because it was kind of um, in between those two rooms. Uh, so we didn't know w which specific room it was even. Um, so we're, you know, claiming complete uh, plausible deniability on that. Um, not our damage whatsoever. And we're really disappointed that no one ever brought that to our attention and basically assumed that we had uh, done that sort of damage. And so um, I don't know what else to say on that, except for I'm, I'm, I, I would respectfully disagree, and so on 100% on of all levels. And again, uh, we asked him on our way out um, if there was anything at all uh, whatsoever of any sort of policy violations or uh, room damages or anything like that, and they said nothing. He said nothing to us whatsoever of the sort. And then all of a sudden now, only when my dad calls in is he starting to give uh, some reasoning about damage. Only when you call in, he's giving this reasoning about damage. So like I said, I don't really appreciate being, uh, what is essentially being framed for that type of situation. And so uh, the other situation, um, I, I had a feeling that he might bring that up too. That was actually the other thing that my dad um, was uh, talking to us about. And so uh, that was a very unusual situation regarding uh, potentially, I'm guessing, um, some food. Uh, 
Um, I, I haven't spoken to very many other employees or any employees uh, with any sort of, um, you know, uh, animated or aggressive types of tones of voice. It was just him one day, and it wasn't really aggressive. I was concerned. And by the way, we, record, we recorded that conversation too with him because we've been misinterpreted, and I don't want to say uh, lynched in the past, uh, but essentially what had led up to that conversation was uh, some issues that we did not know about because no one brought them to our attention about some potential, I'm guessing this is what he's talking about, is some food issues where we were taking more than our fair share, quote unquote, um, with some to-go trays. And so there was only one encounter that I had with an employee uh, that basically accused me of uh, taking four trays uh, when I did not, absolutely did not. I actually only had taken two, which they had given me. Um, and they never said there was any policy violation there. And I had come up a third time for some cups. And so I guess she thought that that was too much. Uh, but she didn't um, tell me to stop or anything. She literally just made kind of a snide remark of like, uh, well, it looks like you've been up here four times. And, and I tried to correct her, but, you know, it was a pretty busy line at the time. Uh, it was like a Saturday morning or something. And so uh, no one, no employee has ever come up to me regarding any sort of issues. And I've always been very cordial with the people at the um, uh, in the kitchen and stuff. Like I'm pretty good friends with one of the ladies there. And so there was only one small issue that had brought, been brought up, brought to my brother's attention with regards to some, um, uh, like a container of milk that he was filling up. And when he uh, had talked to the manager about that, we tried to explain that uh, we're not down there every day and we still take the same amount of milk that we would otherwise drink while we sat down in the area, you know, but we uh, don't like to eat in front of everybody because I have kind of like a loud burping and a um, spitting sort of medical condition with my stomach. And so uh, that issue was cleared up pretty quickly between my brother and the manager there, uh, the gentleman. Um, and however, I, I still thought that there was um, some issues there with regards to uh, some of the ladies. And so I actually went down there and talked to him myself and clarified further. I was like, hey, you know, um, I have a medical thing and we actually you know, I usually drink that amount of milk and, and David was also carrying it for me. So it wasn't just personally for him. Uh, you know, oftentimes he'll, he'll do a run for both of us. And, and I also tried to explain to the uh, manager that I um, also drink a whole lot of uh, juice um, to kind of hold my stomach down. I mean, the whole reason why we were in that hotel was uh, because I had been to the ER several times and um, my medical condition was basically taking a turn for the worst. And so my parents uh, kind of put me up into a hotel. Uh, we had been living out of a van. Um, we, we have a lot of paperwork legally and stuff. And so our, our van had broken down. It was a good place to type and stuff like that. Uh, but basically, I had um, I had a uh, what one could consider a uh, pretty uh, stern conversation with him because I felt as though I had been profiled by these previous um ladies, which uh, he had brought up. Uh, I was only sort of initially bringing up the milk and stuff. And so when he brought up the, um, basically accusing me of violating some sort of policies with regards to the food, I tried to clarify with him. And um, I basically said, hey man, you know, we're, you know, stop penny pinching slash accusing us of doing things that aren't really in violation of anything. And I walked off. However, I immediately came back about five minutes later and actually apologized to him. Uh, I, w I basically said, um, yeah, you know, like, um, I just wanted to, you know, put my foot down. I'm really sorry. And he actually sort of said something along the lines of, oh, well, you're, um, you know, you're redhead uh, Irish, you know, so am I. And, and so it kind of runs in the blood. I, I understand, you know, no hard feelings, things like that. And so it was, uh, to my knowledge, 100% resolved. And I didn't even think it really was much of an issue in the first place. And so I haven't spoken to any other employees in any harsh terms or, or anything whatsoever and, and my brother and I record practically every interaction we have with anybody at this point because um, we never know what happens uh, pe literally people have framed me in the past many times um, because I don't know if it's the way I look or if it's my uh, the way I talk or so forth um, but like I said we had recorded those conversations so you can kind of if you need uh, the, the true evidence um, I don't believe that we had any uh, uh, issues. Um, if he's mentioning other employees too, I have definitely, I haven't even spoken to other employees about any 
issues with regards to uh, anything really that, uh, at that establishment. It was always with him. And so I don't know if uh, you said that he had mentioned that I have been this aggressive with other employees, but I definitely have not. And, um, and so I guess, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say as well is I, um, I respectfully disagree again on that note. And I'm extremely concerned now of basically, um, I don't want to have to say this, but my brother and I have actually seen this type of behavior, uh, a couple of times now. And, uh, so when we ask for that, uh, type of due process from him, we went down there, uh, today after, after he told us to leave and we very quietly, soft spokenly asked him, Hey man, like, you know, are, are there any policy violations? Uh, can you print out some sort of documentation for what your policies are? Uh, you know, uh, I don't recall specifically, but I, I know I, I, I probably would have asked about damages to the room. Um, I asked about uh, payments, you know, being pre-authorized and so forth. And I ultimately asked, is there anything wrong at all whatsoever? And he said, absolutely no. And so I, I think that's probably because he didn't want to, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but tell us to our faces, these types of things, wanted to get rid of us, maybe stop us from sniffing up any sort of trail or exercising our rights. Um, but then for him to literally turn around and uh, explain to my dad all these things, I had, a, I had to have a, like a 30 minute conversation with my dad, uh, just like I'm doing with you to sort of reverse the defamation that uh, the, the, the investigations were not really wholehearted. Uh, I don't think that he spent the uh, adequate amount of time. And I think he's actually coming up with excuses to get rid of us because he might not like us. And so, like I said, the uh, water damage, absolutely not us whatsoever. Um, I, I know that there's probably going to have to be some sort of documentation for when that actually did happen. And it's going to be about five days after we had left that room. So I don't, uh, I, I don't think that's going to be able to be attributed to us whatsoever. And um, if the only other accusation is some sort of aggressive conversations, I would like to know uh, when they happened specifically. Maybe we can uh, match them up uh, to my recordings and with who that they were with, uh, because I definitely have never spoken uh, to any other managers out in there at all, really. It's always been uh, just him. And so whatever aggressive uh, uh, conversations I've had with him, let's put it this way, any sort of um, sternness, like I was saying earlier, has always been in response to baseless accusations that they always pushed our way first. And like I said, with the food, uh, and then here with the damages and so forth. Um, I, I mean, w when he first was up in the uh, stairs and he told us, uh, um, the threshold of our door um we became pretty heated pretty quick because he uh was accusing us of uh damages to the room uh but wouldn't specify um and then but once we went downstairs and uh, uh met him in the front counter area um we had a chance to obviously you know cool down a little bit uh but we we've, we've always been pretty pretty well spoken people i mean pretty soft spoken people and so um the only reasons why we would have ever raised our voices, uh, but not much, would be, like I said, in response to uh, pretty harsh conclusion jumping. Like he uh, never gave us a chance to argue or to, uh, how would I would put it, um, to hear our side of the story to see if we even have merit. As in, I think he really did accuse us of a lot of things and just assumed that, you know, that we would uh, either admit to it or agree or just get out or so forth and so on. Uh, but I'm, I'm really serious here. We did not cause any water damage and we did not be the type of aggressive that I think he is purporting to say. I think he's having to say those things in order to establish uh, reasons as to why we no longer have any rights to stay there. And, um, my biggest issue with that is that there was never any due process given to us. Like I said, we asked him very specifically before we left, Hey man, is there anything at all? And he said, absolutely nothing. And so if he's not going to tell us that to our faces in order to give us like a path to argue down, 
that's uh, in, in kind of the legal world, you know, since we have to deal with a lot of um, people wronging us in the legal world, that's why our paperwork is a lot with the van and stuff, is that it's a due process violation. And so, you know, the fact that he wouldn't let us even defend ourselves and so forth, um, I'm, I would very much like to have a deeper investigation go into this. Uh, like I said, I have the evidence that we can provide on our side. Um, and the fact that he never wrote out, wrote down anything initially in the paperwork. Um, we, we asked for any documentation of, of damages or, or uh, policy violations. He, he wouldn't provide any whatsoever. And so here, here we go, you know, of course he's gonna, when held to the fire, he's gonna have to give some sort of reasoning. But if you listen to the audio, he flat out told us no reason at all whatsoever and basically said he has the right to refuse service to anybody uh, because he's a private establishment, that he has, he, he doesn't have to give a reason at all. And he said that there were no reasons and that, and so here we are, why, why is he giving you all these reasons all of a sudden beats me. I'm, you know, like I said, uh, I don't want to say this, but I, I feel that the integrity and the honesty and trustworthiness of this gentleman, uh, is extremely compromised. Um, especially when, I don't want to have to insinuate these sort of things, but I feel as though that he grew tired of us and didn't know specific ways in order to get rid of us that were protected, meaning that he never actually caught us any, in any sort of violations. It was just a couple of close calls. And so in order to play it safe, he had to stretch the truth or trump up some of these accusations in order to um, justify not renting to us anymore. And, and so it's really shocking because on our side, uh, you know, we're re really meticulous. Uh, we go through our rooms before we leave, make sure everything's okay and that there aren't any damages. And we, when we um, go into the next room, we, we always look to see if there's anything that's obvious that we might be blamed for damage wise. And I, we thought we were extremely good tenants there. We were paying and uh, our parents were helping us out and um, it was a very important lifeline. And so uh, honestly, we, we would very much like to open up a discrimination investigation into this gentleman uh, because of a series of events that he is misconstruing and misinterpreting. And basically, like I said, if we're not in any sort of true violation of any policies um, that would merit um, a denial of our common law privilege to use those services as a, as a public entity, uh, we, we would very much like to have our privileges restored. We very much appreciate that. Okay, well, I definitely do apologize about all of that. Um, what I can do, well, I documented everything that you just stated, and I can send it over to the hotel since it's more of a legal issue since the hotel actually you to leave due to issues. If, we wouldn't be able to override what the hotel is stating. Um, sure. What I can do is I can ask for proof as far as for the carpet, um, but as far as being the whole aggressive and all that, I'm pretty sure they don't have that. They didn't record anything like that. Because it is at the hotel's discretion to actually to leave. Oh, of course. Our are independently owned and operated. And again, as I stated, I can I not located everything, and I'll send it over to the hotel to see if they can send proof. Yeah, but I mean, uh, if it's just, um, like if they're just making up stuff, to get rid of us <clears throat> that's about as bad as you can possibly get that's like some pretty bad civil discrimination stuff and so uh if you if you were like what we were asking that's why we were asking on our way out is if there's any sort of documentation if you could actually get uh them to write down some sort of statements as to <clears throat> exactly what they meant by aggressive and so forth and so on because um yes of course uh, a business has the right to refuse service for specific reasons that are um, protected by law. However, if the reasons are that the person is black or something, or that they just don't like them, uh, then those are not protected reasons. And and so now you're denying uh, services to the public at large, and um, it's a, about as big and fat and ugly as a, of a discrimination uh, lawsuit that I can possibly think of. And so if he's, if he's truly insinuating that we were aggressive, um, keep in mind, like I said, the aggressive nature uh, may have only been in a result 
of him and his baseless accusations, which I imagine anybody would be that upset. However, if he's claiming that we were aggressive just out of nowhere, uh, I would very much like to uh, know how and why somebody would be aggressive over nothing. I mean, if you think about that, why would somebody just go up to somebody and just start yelling at him and, and stuff like that? And we're not very aggressive, we're not aggressive people. And so if you would care to elaborate, that would be, that's why we called you guys is to get uh, some sort of uh, side of the story out from him because we certainly didn't get it. And, and our and our dad sort of got uh, the one-sided version that you're getting. And, um, uh, but, but this is extremely serious. This is somebody that is potentially lying and making up stuff in order to get rid of somebody that they have no lawful justification to actually get rid of. And so if somebody's just gonna keep making stuff up like that, um, I would I would like to know the details and I would like to have some sort of due process in order to fight that if possible. Um, because I don't think uh, somebody should be discriminating if, if they are. And I'm not trying to insinuate anything, uh, but I can tell you the types of behaviors that he's um, insinuating that I'm doing or my brother is doing uh, is not going to rise to the level of a reason, I think, to ban somebody forever, especially uh, a hotel. I mean, that's like the last lifeline of a, of a person. Uh, you know, there, you can't really say, oh, let's just go to the next hotel over because uh, unfortunately my brother and I have been in situations where multiple different entities like shopping centers, um, King, King Supers for instance, uh, they have a lot of the same types of people that are employed at these places and they unfortunately have in certain cities um, done the exact same systematic behavior and have outright banned us um, without lawful justification, without reasons and so forth. And so we're left with the reverse where we're cleaning up everything out after the fact to restore our privileges. Uh, but we have to do it from outside the town because now we got to go to somewhere else to buy our groceries. And so... For a hotel to kick us out and make up some reasoning that we are uh, aggressive, I'm, I have never been more disappointed in my entire life. I, I do not believe that my brother and I have caused any trouble enough to warrant this type of accusations. I am actually appalled. And uh, the only reason why I'm uh, not yelling at you right now is because obviously you're not him. <laughs> But I, uh, you know, I'm, I, I think people have a right to be assertive and stern. And I think, um, like I said earlier, and I'll just finish with this, I have a sneaking suspicion that there were other reasons, like I said, with the, uh, possibly the food and, or maybe some damages to the room that he couldn't prove, but he just might think that he just still knows that it's us or something like that, that he's going to, you know, not have all the justification to get rid of us on those terms uh, but he's going to make something else up to get rid of us because ultimately he's making a business decision and he is essentially getting rid of a couple of people that he doesn't like and and I don't like saying this but we we, we are uh, my brother and I we we look a certain way uh, you know with long hair and we're also uh, pro se attorneys so we also defend ourselves and and talk ourselves and but we're not pe mean people. I mean, we're actually really, really nice, really mellow, really boring people. We just, um, like I said, we get framed all the time. And then every time that we get framed, we have to literally talk to our perpetrators and explain to them that they don't have the actual evidence necessary. And usually we're pretty stern at that point. We're gonna be putting our foot down. And so for us to be blamed for our own sternness which is purely in response to them effectively lynching us, that's, that's going to go down in history books as, as one of the meanest ways to get rid of somebody and to discriminate against them. We, you know, we are, we are not the type of people that I think he is making us out to be. And that's why we made this phone call here, because we had a sneaking suspicion that he was going to do this. Uh, we, like I said, we already spoke to our dad about it, got an entirely different story out of him, uh, but you know, he's not putting his money where his mouth is when he talked to us. He literally said no reason at all to us. And so why would uh, somebody 
uh, offer an entirely different uh, set of excuses or say, so in this case, no excuse to us and then turn around and say all these things. Um, I, like I said, I think that um, certainly compromises his integrity. Um, I don't want to have to go to some sort of civil discrimination court um, in order to reverse this. Um, I don't know how far up the chains that you can go. Uh, but if you can note that uh, we have audio and proof that he gave us a very, very, very different story to us and um, who told us uh, the entirely different story than he told you guys, uh, that deeply concerns me. And, and like I said also, um, we asked him very specifically if he had um, given us the or had if he had accepted a pre-authorization for three days on Sunday night. And he said that, no, there was only one day of pre-authorization. And if you look at the records for that uh, room 106 uh, for the previous month, my dad, I believe, has probably been doing the three days every three days for a very long time. Um, uh, it's just a... Uh, something that he's, you know, it's just easier for him. And so for all of a sudden him to, uh, uh, and, and I talked to him and he thought he, he, you know, did a three day authorization too. And my, my mom was pretty adamant too. She's like, yeah, on Sunday night, they, you know, called in. And so, um, what I'm trying to get at is I believe that he is lying and trying to spin it such that there was only one day of pre-authorization so that he would, essentially choose not to bill for the next day or in this case the day after um, as a way to also uh, use an excuse to get rid of us uh, that we didn't pay and uh, and then I think he said something to my dad uh, along the lines of um, that there was a mistake that there, you know we shouldn't have been renting the room yesterday and things like that but honestly my dad had uh, this is his side and so you can talk to him too uh, genuinely believes that he had uh, put in a three-day authorization. And so we think that this guy, this uh, manager, had a preconceived, premeditated notion that he did not want to keep renting to us. And so he essentially uh, took the payment or took the credit card uh, pre-authorization, um, made himself and everyone on his side believe that it was only for one day and then therefore could have, use it as, a, as an excuse. And he even told us, he's like, yeah, man, you guys didn't pay. And it's like, but we did, meaning you could have charged our dad because he gave a three-day pre-authorization. And then, then he was like, no, it was just a, a day. And so since you guys didn't pay and it's been an hour later, you know, that's just one more reason to get rid of you. And so that's, a, that's really, really bad. That is a big, fat, ugly lie, I think, that he provided. I don't think that uh, there was a single day pre-authorization. I think there was three days and he was looking for one more reason to get rid of us. And so, uh, you know, all I can do is refer you to the previous records of uh, room 106 um, and or there was a, another room to something, 201 or 216. Um, and, and so like, you know, my dad has historically done every three days. That's, uh, you know, that we've always seen. And so for him to all of a sudden change it up and have just a single day for pre-authorization, I'm going to vote hogwash on that. And so I'm, I'm really sorry that you have to listen to this. I wish I didn't have to bring all these things to your attention, but it's extremely difficult to clean up these types of situations when it's just a, he said, she said, but I really think that there's a lot of evidence there. And so I, you know, maybe you guys can go. Do a little bit of homework, see when that um, pipe was actually broken, when it was reported, when it was repaired. Because um, I, I don't want to have to say this, but I really, we really don't appreciate being framed and essentially lynched for things that we know we didn't do. And so I've, I've never had an issue with them. I've never been the type of employee or sorry, customer uh, that I believe uh, merits, uh, kicking out. And like I said, if there was such an issue with me, why didn't he bring it up himself? Why didn't he tell us? Why didn't he give us an opportunity to, uh, defend ourselves or clarify or, you know, negate his, uh, suspicions? Um, you know, if it, I don't think it's very fair for him to 
uh, not give us that opportunity. And also, I think it's pretty disingenuous, possibly even malicious, um, for him to kind of sort of build this case, uh, you know, behind us and, and, and then only go and, you know, say these different things to my dad and, and to you. And so we're just, we're just sick and tired of being lynched. And we really think this guy may have got a wrong idea for who we are, or at least, um, based upon our attitudes and behaviors and looks, uh, may have, uh, grown paranoid. And uh, the, the paranoia, we've seen this. We've actually had to document this vehemently with our complaints of other pe people and other institutions, police and private entities, where there's kind of like a schizophrenic type paranoia where these people think that we're going to cost them money down the road. and But they can't quite put a finger on how to get rid of us right then and there. And so they've, uh, in the past, I've literally, I have been framed up, like literally framed with completely false facts that I know aren't true, that I don't know how the heck they get to them being true, um, but that they don't know how else to get rid of us and they think that we're a, a liability when we we really aren't. I don't think we're a liability at all. I, I don't think we did anything. I don't think we damaged anything. I know we didn't damage anything. I don't think we were aggressive. I know I'm assertive, uh, but... Like I said, I recorded that conversation and we clarified it. And we were, uh, he said, hey man, you know, no, no harsh uh, feelings or anything like that, you know? And by the way, he was uh, equally as assertive in that one conversation I had with him. And so uh, for a manager to sort of bite my head off uh, because he can't accept that his employees failed on an investigation and we weren't really um, the the policy violators for, for that food incident. You know, that like, dude, this guy is just, not the genuine and in, in you know upstanding guy that I think uh, he's trying to make himself out to be. I wish I didn't have to say this, but I think we got lynched by him. And so I don't know how else to say it, but that's is why this is why we record everything. We've recorded every single conversation with him, and um, if you if, if you want to listen to him, we we got him. We're gonna have to add it to our same YouTube channel. We have like I kid you not like fifty five other occasions. <laughs> So yeah, you can um, send it. Um, I'll give you an email address. That works. Yeah, when, once we put it all together, we can um, uh, we can provide it to you. Um, let me know when you're ready. Uh, yeah, let me get the something here. Yeah. Uh, ironically, our YouTube channel <clears throat> is guilty until proven innocent, um, because most of the time when we get lynched like this without evidence, we end up having to sort of explain our way back out of it, you know, prove our innocence, uh, because they, they didn't actually have any evidence to, you know, convict us off of, so whatever. Um, uh, I'm ready for you. What do you got? Okay, so it's guess dot experience at choicehotels.com. Guest dot experience at choice hotels one word. Yes, the hotels as well. Choice hotels. Yep, I have a sneaking suspicion, or at least I'm hoping that uh, once you hear the audio, um, he uh, definitely, definitely did not mention any of this whatsoever. To us, uh, we we sort of uh, really really tried to get something out of him so that we could have a conversation over it, and so um, now you know we get the truth out of it, and so hopefully you guys can see both sides that somebody would be that two faced, and like I said, uh, might be trying to tiptoe out of a civil discrimination lawsuit uh, that we may have caught him in. We, we see it all the time when people accuse us and they uh, are empty, baseless accusations. We call them out pretty quick on it, and then a lot of times they don't know what to do, and so they end up making a bunch of crap up or lying to us about it and stuff like that. So we're really sorry that you have to be brought into this. Um, my brother and I are just different. We're not really um, bad people, uh, but <clears throat> I guess you could say we probably scare some people that don't know their law and don't know their rights, and they're very capitalistic and they probably think that we're just 
some big liability that just something bad is going to happen down the road. And it never does. And it, we, we're not those types of people. And so, like I said, being framed for being assertive when I was only responding to baseless accusations in the first place, um, I guess we'll just uh, put together as much information as we can for you guys and, and go from there and see what we can accomplish. So th okay. thanks for listening. Well, again, I definitely do apologize about that. Just uh, make sure you go ahead and send that over. Let me give you a reference number. Sure, sure thing. That you can attach. Um, you can put that in the subject line. It's 895-7446. 895-7446. Awesome. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Sorry for the You're lengthy welcome. conversation. Thank you. It's okay. And thank you for calling Choice Hotels. You have a good day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.